Hey guys, it's Matt from Eastwood. We're here in the Eastwood garage doing another live tech session, uh, both on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, for you guys that haven't watched one of these before, we want it to be as interactive as possible. Over here we have Randy sitting and you see a lot of the videos. Yeah, thanks for joining us. If you got any questions, make sure you post them and uh, I'll throw them back to Matt on uh, YouTube and Facebook and he'll answer them for you live. So uh, today we're covering, uh, if you guys that haven't uh, just kind of joined us, we're doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at 3 o'clock Eastern time is kind of our, uh, our standard now. Uh, on Wednesdays I'm trying to do a little bit more of an in-depth project or a how-to, uh, whether it's welding or whatever. So today uh, I'm working on finishing up a Decklid skin for a Model A. Uh, that I built. So if you guys um, check out our website, we have on the blog, uh, on the Eastwood blog, I did a couple series of articles where I built a, uh, well I first um, took this Decklid skin or uh, structure that was all rotted out. It was really bad. I think we might have a shot of it when it originally started. It was just rotted away. It was, you know, hardly anything left of it except for the the center section, and I rebuilt everything, uh, kind of rebuilt the, the outer edges of it. And then in another uh, tech article, I built, uh, showed you guys how to build a Decklid skin from scratch. So I got a Decklid skin here that's, that's rolled up, half decent, and now we're ready to actually put the skin on the inner structure. I figured this would be a good one to show you guys how to prepare your panel, uh, how to set it up, and a couple tools that I like to use that makes it a little bit easier to get everything welded in place and uh, finished out nicely. So earlier today, to save us some time, um, we have a couple shots of it where I was spraying the inner structure uh, with some self-etching uh, weld-through primer, and I did that on the edges, and then on the rest of the, the, the uh, deck lid structure on the inside, I was spraying uh, Eastwood's rust encapsulator in black just to seal up any residual uh, surface rust that was left on the panel. I stripped it last evening with our, um, our, one of our stripping tools and then also the Contour SCT to, to strip up the, uh, the big areas. But we used the um, rust encapsulator and I used the self-etch on the edges because we're going to actually be welding to those. And I wanted it to be able to weld through the, the little bit of rust. Um, not rust, a little bit of uh, metal that's there it, with the primer, you can weld through it. So um, I have my inner structure over here. We're gonna be using the Eastwood uh, MP200i uh, MIG welder today. Uh, cool thing about this, this is the perfect time to use this welder. One of the reasons I really love this welder is this welder has a spot timer on it. So I'm gonna flick, flick this on so we can use it when we're ready. Um, and what I did ahead of time before we, the broadcast is I got a piece of, uh, two pieces of steel here I just put together and I clamped them together and I got my settings just how I liked it. So on the machine I have it set to the spot timer and I have the spot timer set here at about half a second on, the, uh, on that, on the timing. And then I have it set at 21.3 volts. Uh, this is an infinite adjustable setup, so I could really dial it into what I wanted. And in the end, I got a pretty flat uh, spot weld that's going to fill up the hole that we, uh, that we or plug weld that we, that we punched in this. So that's setting the machine up. Here on this uh, panel, I, I punched most of the holes already, but I left, I left a couple, the area that I didn't punch any yet, just so you guys could see. So here... I've punched a few. There's a couple uh, stray holes. Those are from Clico uh, holes. When I was building the panel, I had Clicoed it in the, in the beginning before I got it fitting real good. Um, so we'll weld those up at the end as well. But what I use is uh, we have this pneumatic flange punch tool that's really handy. If you've ever drilled a bunch of spot weld holes uh, when you're doing sheet metal work, it's, it's kind of a pain in the butt. You've got to sand the burrs off the back. With this, it's got a little punch you can really quickly punch a hole in the panel. And I got a couple that we need to do throughout here, so I'm gonna punch those real quick. The other nice thing is it has a depth on it, so I'll try and get this so Joe can get a shot, but it has a throat on it that you can, you can put it on the, uh, on the piece of sheet metal and every time get the same depth of your punch. So you get a uniform spot welds throughout, which is really nice. So by setting the machine up ahead of time and using this to get uniform uh, punched holes, it's, uh, it gives you a nice finish in the end. So, hopefully you guys got that. Did that? Good. All right, cool. So, I'm going to go here and just punch a couple holes on this, but super simple. 
So I punch the hole, it's got a little, the little uh, cartridge of, of my punched out pieces will come out there. But, so I just do them every so often. We'll, So you can see it's given us you know, about the same punch all the way through, which is really nice. So I did those last few. I pretty much all the other ones have already been punched. So they are uh, ready to go. And now what I need to do is just, I got to fit the skin to the inner structure. Uh, it is a tight fit because, well, I made it half decent, so it fits well. So I got to wrestle it just a little bit to get it to fit in. I'm going to move this out of frame here. And we're going to be working over here just so it's better for you guys to see what's going on. Um, and feel free to ask any questions. If you have any questions about fabrication or what we're doing today, feel free to uh, drop us a line. So, uh, sorry, Joe, this probably isn't going to be the best. There's a joke I normally use here, but I can't use it. It's something about a monkey and a football. I don't think I can use that today, but that's kind of what this process is like. So I'm just trying to fit this got a little lip in here that I gotta fit this down into. All right, there we go. All right, so I clipped into place. I opened up the flange here on the top a little bit ahead of time just so uh, it kind of went a little easier. So um, I'm not going to weld this whole thing for you guys. You know, it's going to take a little bit of time, but I'm going to do a handful of welds, show you how to use this spot weld feature on the, on the welder. Uh, but I'm going to have to adjust this top edge here because I opened it up a little bit just so I could pop it on a little easier so you, we weren't watching me struggle for an extended period of time. So. Um, as I mentioned, I got the spot weld timer already set up. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow us to um, kind of get the same spot weld every time. I set the machine up ahead of time and I don't have to worry about me letting off the trigger too soon. I can just hold it and know that it's gonna give me the same spot weld every time, which is really nice. Um, I did it on a scrap piece, so I may have to adjust it a tiny bit, but shouldn't be too much. So. What I'm going to do is start down here on the bottom. And the other tool I'm using that's really handy, um, we have these plug welding pliers. And their main function is when you're welding, when there's a hole all the way down through, you can actually have this copper pad on here that you clamp down and allows you to build up off of that and fill it, which is really nice. Um, the other time that I use that is on a panel like this because where I'm welding, I can't really get to the back side of the area that we're welding because there's this channel here, which you can probably see that runs all the way up through. So what will happen if I get a blow through real bad here, or I get wire sticking through because I didn't get a, a real good weld, that's going to hit when we go to tr close the trunk lid and then I'm going to be fighting and I'm going to have to get a grinder in there and try and gouge it out. So by using this, this is going to make sure that if I do happen to uh, have not quite the right angle or something that isn't quite right, um, it's going to hit on that piece and not uh, leave any material on the backside or any sags. So we'll start here at the bottom. So what I, other thing that's nice about these is it clamps together the two panels nice and tight. So they're touching really tightly here. Um, and then I can, I can put the welder in and zap that real fast. And I know that everything's tight together. So I'm gonna start down here. I'm gonna have to kind of push it up as we go and we'll go from there now. So, got this set. So, the other thing to mention, I, I always forget it, even how many times I've done this, when there's a little ball on the tip of your, when you're doing these, these spot welds throughout, um, there's a little ball that ends up on the end here every time it's good to try and cut that off. If you don't get it quite right where it's, the, the tip is still hot, um, you got to cut off that little bit of ball. 
So right there on the end there is that little ball. What happens is it takes more, it takes more power to melt that little ball because it's probably twice the thickness of the, of the uh, wire. Let's see and turn it there so you can see. Um, so what I like to do is just clip it off every time if I can. And let's see how this one will go. So I got the panel st stood up on end here just so you can kind of see what's happening and then also I can work a little easier. Oh, got one little spot there. So that one, I'm going to jump and do a few of these real quick so we're not. And I got my Clico holes here, so I'm going to hit that up. Nice thing with those are these pliers. Whoop. These pliers have that copper backer, so because the Clico holes are all the way through, this will back those up and I can weld them without any drama. See, you got to do that every time, especially when you have the spot timer set up. I have it set up with fresh wire, not with that, that ball on the end. So I have to make sure I clip that or I'm not going to get the same weld every time. Missed a little corner there. Now the only user error here is if I don't line up my torch just right with that hole, I can miss a little bit of the hole. So. Not the machine, that's me not being able to see very well. So. There we go. There, there's one. Before I unclamp it, you can check that one out. So you can see it's nice and flat. We don't have a big mound of, of weld up on top of it. So it's real flat. We know because we got these copper backing pliers on here, I don't have anything that's going to fall through and become an issue when the trunk lid closes. We know it's going to close up just fine and uh, keep moving. So I'm going to do, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit and do a couple up here and then we're going to flip it over to the other side. Uh, any questions as we're working here? Yeah, we've got um, a couple people were asked a couple people were asking the difference between a spot weld and a plug weld. So I thought maybe I tried to explain it, but I'm but, sort of limited by 200 spaces. <laughs> so the so question was uh, the difference between a spot weld and a plug weld. I guess technically a spot weld would be a resistant spot weld. Uh, is what would have been done from the factory where there's two tips that would have come down with the pieces between and, and the resistance between those tips would actually weld them together. There would be no hole. So technically what we're doing here is a plug weld. Um, I kind of use them interchangeably. I think a lot of people do in the automotive world. And it's they called can, a spot weld timer, which maybe I thought well, that's why. Yeah. It's called a spot weld timer, but you can use it to, to do a plug yeah, weld. Yeah, it, it, it's, at this point it's kind of become slang, the spot weld term, um, where originally what it would have meant is a resistance spot weld. But we're, we're still welding a spot, and that's why we use that terminology on there. But it's kind of the same thing, a plug weld, you're, you're filling up a hole, same kind of idea. Um, plug weld I generally is more of like a thicker metal type thing. You see it more commonly, uh, that term used. But either way, we're filling a hole. All right. So I'm going to jump ahead just to make sure the panel. I just want to make sure that the panel is uh, going to hold together when I flip it over and then we'll do a, a few on the other side. So I'll trim that little bit of extra off here. Zap that. But you can hear the weld time is the same every time, except for that one where I, I just zapped a little extra, but um, afterwards. But it's the same every time, so we can know that we get a same weld. There's not much room for user error there. Um, this particular machine, uh, it's not the only thing that it does. It does a normal uh, MIG functions. Uh, it also has a, a stick TIG option on it. So if you guys want to dabble in, in arc welding or even get started in TIG welding, this does have uh, a TIG welder function on it that you can do DC only, uh, steel 
welding. It's a scratch start, but it's a good uh, entry level way to get into TIG welding, which is nice. But this is my favorite feature on this machine, why I own one. So we're going to go up here and we're going to clamp this down again. We're going to go a little tighter. There's a little bit of overhang on the inner structure. I wanted to wait till I get everything fit. In the end, then I'll take a sander and knock down just those little bit of overhang. But I usually don't do that till it's all kind of welded and ready to go. All right, so we got enough here that this thing should kind of hold in place. I'll wipe all that off. But we don't have any, I don't know if you can get down low enough here. I have a couple little pinholes where I didn't have the angle quite right where I'll have to just tap them quickly. But the main thing to see here is these welds, they're not sitting real high or proud off of the panel. They're pretty much flat. So, excuse me, inside the, uh, inside the, the jam or the gutter area, this isn't going to have an issue. You're not going to have to, have to grind a bunch of material off or we're not going to have to have to worry about that hitting. Uh, because the weld's sticking up high. So you can set the welder up ahead of time like I did and know that you're going to get a pretty consistent weld every time. So now I can flip this guy over. And I already got a bunch of them drilled on this side here. And I'm going to pull everything together. And I have a pair of they're just our locking clamps. And I just want to pull this together to start lightly um, to get this inner structure to kind of pull in where I want, like that. So don't be afraid to use clamps to kind of get everything sitting how you want, because you only get one try at this. Otherwise, you're going to have to grind it all off and start back over, which is no fun. So I put my clamp right on my panel. Let's start on this end. Ball on the end. Did we get a close up of the that little ball you're cutting off on the end of the wire? Uh, yeah, Have we'll we get another. I'll do another one. We did, but let's we'll grab another we, one for anybody. We got a couple missed. questions about what you were doing. Sure. <clears throat> yeah. There's the. Uh, we got one in the beginning, but I think it's good to show it again. You're right. So let me. Uh, we'll do this one. I'll show you guys immediately. So I got my uh, wire. Well, Joe can see here. This is what we're starting off with. So I got my wire cut. Got just a little bit of stick out on the end here. So we got a fresh piece of wire cut off, ready to go, which is great. Let me know when you got that. All right. So now I'm going to zap this one in here. And then let me just put the wire out a little further so Joe can show you guys. So I'm going to try and... So can you see that? There's a a little ball right there on the end of it where it's, you know, he's going to try and get that macro. Oh, there we go. We're getting fancy. We got a monitor now, so I can really see what the heck he's doing. So he's getting that close up there. But you can see that little ball in the end. That's what I'm referencing. So the problem is every time you do one of these spot or plug welds, you're going to get that little ball on the end. It's just the residual uh, wire that wasn't enough to melt onto the workpiece but still stuck onto the end of the wire. So what I need to do then, uh, what, what the problem is with that is when you have your welder set up, you set your welder to weld without that ball in the end. That, that ball is probably almost twice the diameter of the wire because it's a bunch of wire kind of melted together. So when you go to start welding, your, your initial weld, and you know it's only half a second is what we have it set up, so you don't have much time, your first maybe second or two of this weld is going to be too cold because there's not enough power to melt that out. So what you need to do is each time, take your pliers 
and you can, these pliers work two ways. There's one cool way where you can turn it this way and actually set your stick out if you like it that way. And it, it gives you a preset amount of wire sticking out every time. So you can do that or you could flip the other the other way and we can trim it all the way close if we need to, depending on what you're doing. I, for what we're doing today, I like it just a little bit less than what's in there. Hopefully that answered the question for you guys. That's one that I, I sometimes get lazy and don't do, but it always bites me whenever I don't take that off. So again, I'm just using my pliers here to lightly press everything together where I want it to be. Um, we only need these, these locking pliers for probably the first couple that we're doing, and then the rest of the time we can just use these copper uh, plug weld pliers for the rest of it. Oh. My bad. It's tough with these lights. That's my excuse at least. All right. So I got one there. Now it's coming together pretty good. I'm going to jump down a few here. And again, using the MP200 with the spot weld timer um, set at half a second and 21.3 volts is, was the sweet little spot that I liked it at, um, which is about seven on the dial. Seems to be good for laying a nice flat weld, getting good penetration here. Alright, I'm going to do one here down at the bottom, then we should be, we should have enough. I actually got two holes here. I put a plug weld hole and a, had a Cuico hole. Must have my eyes closed. I was doing that. Gotta hit both of them there. I need to touch some of them up a little bit, but not too bad. So, now we have, at least I got the panel kind of sticking together here, so got one piece. Along this top edge here, I got to pull this together, and like I said, I got to hammer, well not hammer, I just got to use a clamp and, and maybe a dolly. I could hammer a little bit to get that flat, but we're going to do the same across this top here. The bottom edge here, uh, all this needs is just, it's a folded edge, it's a hemmed edge here. So I'll turn this so you guys can, can see. So this hemmed edge, all I need to do is just put a dolly behind it uh, on the outside of the, the, the visible part of the skin as a backer. And then I can take our door skin plier, or our door skin hammer and hammer along the edge there uh, and just flatten that down uh, on the, onto the inner structure. And then that's pinched on this side. You can put a couple little spot welds if you need to, need to um, on there, but the, the ones all around the other sides of it should be pretty good. But what we got is a Model A Deckwood skin for not a lot of money. So any other questions we had? That was a tried to make it short and sweet, but hopefully there's some tips in there for you guys. Um, that was uh, all the questions for today. Sweet. There's a lot. There's a lot of questions though. Good. Well, so. thank you guys for for. Uh, Asking questions as always, we, we really like the uh, participation. Um, if you have any, any future projects or videos or a product that you'd like to see us um, use or show you more information about that we sell, uh, feel free to drop us a line in the comments. Uh, this broadcast is available to watch recorded both on Facebook and YouTube. So you guys can ask questions there. We do monitor it for the next day or and so. And people were watching our video yesterday and mentioned an essential. That Ooh. you can't see when you're welding, we have a light that you can put on your MIG welder. Yes. Yeah, we had a... The, uh, so people are paying attention. Good. That, that one was uh, yesterday, Randy and I did a welding essentials. So if you scroll down on Facebook or if you go on our YouTube channel, you can see that from yesterday. We did an essential and we went over some of the products that we, uh, we really liked for that. So thanks guys for watching. I appreciate it. I'll catch you guys later.